folks, Todd Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well today. So in recent time, we had PTC8, which we thought was going to form until lean. It didn't. We still have that bringing some disruptive weather into play, but the threat is starting to shift back towards severe weather. So I'm pretty sure you can already guess what this video is going to be about. We do have an enhanced risk tonight for severe storms. Biggest threat is undoubtedly going to be damaging winds, but we have a hatch risk in a 30% area. Unfortunately, I have obligations this evening, so I will not be able to stream this, unfortunately. Very rare instance, don't get used to it, but do have a notable threat tonight, do have a hail threat further up towards Montana, and even a small 2% tornado risk to go with it. Storms are actually ongoing in Canada as well, but not expecting a major event to be ongoing here. I think later in the evening, this is when the wind threat will start to most likely verify. There's always a chance that it may not. So we go towards day two, we drop back down to a marginal risk. There is a chance that this gets upgraded to a slight risk. This is going to be for wind and hail. On day three, we get a new slight risk, and this is back in very familiar territory over towards Minnesota. So the city, the Twin Cities involved, Duluth, and maybe even parts of Wisconsin coming into play like Eau Claire as we go later into tomorrow afternoon. Days four through eight, we have potential too low on day four. And then from that point onward, predictability too low starts to take hold. This basically is meaning that the potential of severe weather is starting to slowly but surely come back into the equation. And this is being shown on the models here as well. There's been a lot of speculation that we will start to see a return of severe weather. And particularly my interest and in focus is kind of more so towards the southern and central plains now. Watch what happens with this jet stream here. You can see this trough right here, and this is going to be the cause of our severe weather today and over the course of the next couple of days. I see a new trough begin to come in after that point. And notice that the track is a little bit further to the south. And you can even see with these uh, contours here, the isobars are starting to form these little uh, curves here. Those are short waves that are coming into play here. We'll see those better on the next map that we look at. But in either case here, you can already start to see where these short waves are. Is going to be where our thunderstorms end up forming and you can start to see that pushing more so towards kansas more so towards oklahoma and the texas panhandle and as we go through the model run here you just kind of see a similar trend begin to take shape here starting to see more activity towards the southern plains even starting to see the ozark getting to the action here as time goes on another feature to keep an eye out for here and i've been seeing this a little bit in the tropical outlooks like i said i'm not really willing to latch on to it just yet but seeing this at 204 hours out is definitely kind of capturing my attention a bit more is the potential for some development over here towards the Caribbean. This could be a Florida impact if this ends up verifying, but models are kind of all over the place with it still. There's still a lot of time to go before we have to pay attention to this. So right now I'm not too concerned, but we may see this pop up in a future tropical update slash outlook very soon. We'll be making one, I would say towards the end of the week. But in any case, though, if this does form, it does look like a Florida impact looks likely. And then another feature kind of pops up over here in association with the uh, troughing that's been going on out towards the west here. Doesn't look like this becomes like an organized storm or anything like that. But there is another feature that comes in along with it that kind of piques my interest as we get further along here. And then also as we get towards the beginning of next month. With this storm coming in, this is going to cause a pretty big pattern shift because now we're starting to see more troughing back out towards the east. So this pattern flip that we're anticipating where it's going to be cooler out to the west, we're going to most likely see the inverse of that as we get towards the beginning of October here. So very wacky times ahead for the weather here. So make sure you're paying very close attention no matter where you are in the lower 48. As you go to the mid-level map here we can actually take a look at how pronounced these short waves could be these mid-level short waves are usually the most potent so of course it's pretty much the same concept looking for those little curves in these contour lines the iso bars whichever one you call them there's no discrimination here especially for my fellow weather nerds but you can see here this storm system is going to be our catalyst for the next couple of days then after that we start to see our attention again shift over towards the southern plains severe weather threat starts to increase as we get towards the beginning of next week maybe even the midwest coming into play once again then after that another feature comes in and we're starting to watch maybe even the ohio valley 
Here's that potential tropical system. Pretty pronounced looking, of course, at the mid-levels, if this does indeed form. But in any case, though, it does look like we, we begin to see a lot more activity, of course, out towards the eastern states, especially in association with that trough. As we get towards the back end of the month, and of course, last but not least, with the wind profile, we always like to look at that low-level jet. And for anyone that's interested, I always try to look for winds that are coming from the south here. And that usually is what will kind of verify any sort of chance of tornadoes here. And I'm particularly interested in Thursday. This is Thursday afternoon we're starting to look at here. I'm not really expecting much in the way of a tornado to start with it as it stands right now. Winds just aren't really well pronounced by the time I would anticipate storm development, which would be right around this time frame here. As you can see, nothing really coming heavily from the south here. Might be a little bit over here to work with, over towards maybe western Wisconsin. We'll keep an eye on that, but right now I wouldn't be too, too concerned about a tornado threat. I think hail, maybe damaging winds are going to be the main threats starting out. We'll get a little bit more of an analysis on that on day two. I'll be making a uh, post tomorrow about that, if not a video, depending on how things trend, of course. Go further along here. This is where my interest in the tornado threat starts to shift a little bit more because you're starting to get a little bit more favorable flow from the south here. And we have this feature coming in that's associated with the new trough over towards the 21st into the 22nd. <clears throat> really, it's going to be the timing that's the key to all of this. So this is heading into Sunday night. So we might be watching over towards Kansas. We might be watching over towards Missouri. Then after that point, we may also be watching the Ohio Valley. It really, The timing is really going to be a key factor in all of this. Low-level jet tends to usually come in late in the overnight hours but you have to have that matching with the instability and the moisture it's a nice little uh cake that you're trying to bake when it comes to severe weather so we continue to go further along here of course tropical system comes in start to see more abundant low level energy coming into play as we get towards the end of the model run here or kind of more or less in a wait and see mode as we look further out especially as we get towards the beginning of october so Another key factor that we're going to be looking at, of course, is going to be the moisture content, moisture returns here. We're mainly looking for these areas in blue here, which are about six degrees Fahrenheit in regards to the dew points. As we go further along, you can see good moisture returns for tomorrow and especially on Thursday. Like I said, I, I don't think the wind profile is going to be super notable in regards to the tornado threat here, but I do think something could be possible especially over towards western Wisconsin once again. After that point, we're going to be putting our attention towards the 21st into the 22nd. And a very notable moisture return starts to come into play here where we're getting those 70 degree dew points. So depending on how that wind profile verifies and the orientation of that trough, I do think we could get some good instability to match up with this as well. And this could lead to a more notable severe threat. As we go further along, that moisture is starting to work its way more to the east. Very good moisture return coming in from the Gulf, pretty much from this point onward at this point, at least heading into the 28th. Then after that point, we get a little bit of a reprieve, but we do get a little bit of a resurgence here as we start the month of October. By October 3rd, we might be watching towards the Southern Plains once again. Not the most active pattern I've ever seen, but potential is there nonetheless. Really, you need only dew points of about 55 degrees plus in order to have a shot at a severe weather event. There are sometimes exceptions to the rule, but typically that's how it would go. <coughs> Excuse me. In any case, though, we're going to verify that also with the surface instability or our CAPE, convective available potential energy. And the things to make note of here, of course, this is heading into Thursday here where we're kind of interested in a more notable threat there. There is good instability available. We actually want to go ahead and take a click at the uh, skew T chart here. Like I said, not really looking like the most notable tornado threat, but nonetheless here, I do think damaging winds are going to be a factor. And this feature right here, or this metric right here, D cape, usually about 800 would be sufficient enough. Even I've even seen seven and 600 verify. 1200 is a pretty big number here, so very favorable environment for some downdrafts here some strong damaging winds we're going to see that continue to take hold as we go through the rest of the evening on thursday might stream that depending on how things trend with that 
then beyond that point, we're really going to be putting a lot of our attention towards Sunday evening and over towards Monday in particular. So we go further along. Instability does seem like it starts to pop up here. The only reason why I'm not always keen on showing CAPE in the early going here is because long range models don't do a great job here. This often changes pretty quickly with each run. But even so, I'm seeing pretty good instability once again over here towards the Ohio Valley, maybe even towards the Deep South as we head towards the 24th. So another date to watch. And then from beyond that point, of course, we have that tropical entity we'll need to keep an extra close eye on from that point. So definitely looks like things are starting to spike up. Uh, uh, things are starting to pick up here. Things are getting more active. But in any case, though, this is what the final result kind of looks like right now. Here's our storm threats over towards the northern states, of course, as we already know. And then over time, we start to see an increase in activity over here towards the southern central plains here. Then the Midwest, more, of course, watching for that tropical feature coming into play here. This actually looks pretty impressive here. It's a 977 millibar low pressure area. So that's a pretty strong hurricane if this does indeed form. So if you're over towards Florida, maybe you can say you saw it here first. Maybe someone else beat me to it. But in any case, though, do need to be watchful of this. But if you are seeing it here first, thanks for watching. And also, this is the time to get ready. There's plenty of time for you to load up on all the supplies that you might need in case this does develop. Not saying that this will. The storm hasn't even developed yet, but we will be watching that. But in any case though, I also see another feature over here in which we also could have some ambient moisture starting to come in over towards the Arizona region as we go further along here. Of course, this is pretty far out, so it's more or less hearsay at this point, but still plenty to keep an eye on here. So. Nonetheless, as we mentioned before, long stretch ahead could be a few severe weather streams, maybe some tropical weather to keep an eye on here. So stay tuned to the channel for further updates. Till then, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I will probably have a video up tomorrow. Depends on what goes on with that feature that we're watching here in the Caribbean in the future. Till then, you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. It's the entire Metalhead Weatherman signing off.